Are we in an interesting or what? No, there's oh. no no, there's no interesting. Hey, what's up, guys? What's going on? Welcome to. Uh, we didn't. We need a name. So we got my co-host here. Uh, I want you all to meet him, Josh from the Den of Nerds. I've linked his channel down below. Some of what's you know up, him. everybody? Um, this is our first time talking. It's our first time doing a live stream. It's our first time uh, chilling. So we're gonna talk about some cool stuff today. Obviously, some Star Wars news as usual. And um, today's theory is coming from Josh himself, Ooh. which uh, I don't know anything about, but you pitched it to me, and I'm like, all right, yeah. sure, let's make the show that. So yeah, man, take it away, I'm man. Excited. What's I'm what's this Felony verse? Yes, yeah, so the Felony verse. So essentially. Um, and this has to do with some things that we see in the Mandalorian trailer, but there's a bevy of rumored shows that are apparently all being developed by Dave Filoni. And my theory on this is that he's developing a group of shows that are almost going to like replace that time in expanded universe with like the air to the empire series and then like the Vong war and stuff. Mm -hmm. And so like, for instance, there's the Ahsoka live action Ahsoka show that's rumored. There's actually a Boba Fett, a standalone Boba Fett show that is rumored to be happening. There's a show with Ezra Bridger and Thrawn that is rumored to be happening. And there's one more that is connected, at least one more that is connected to that group of shows that I don't know what it is. But they're apparently all going to exist in some kind of continuity that's similar to, like, the MCU. Yeah. And so... One of the things that they're apparently doing with this is in the second season of The Mandalorian, they're going to spin out all these characters. So if you've heard the rumors of, you know, obviously Ahsoka being in Mando, Boba, Ezra, you know, possibly Sabine Wren, Bo-Katan, maybe even Rex, uh, some of these characters, I think the plan from Disney's end is to use, well, the most popular show on the planet now in Mando to sort of be a launch pad for all these other shows, much like they did with the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And so, um, yeah, that's essentially the, the, the crux of it, is that that's what I think is going on. Now, even more interesting, and I think something that you'll really dig, is that beyond even that, I think they are going to recreate the Vong War. Now, the, this part's like really far away from any like actual knowledge. This is speculation. But um, have you read any of the Thrawn stuff, the books uh, with Zahn? I'm still, Zahn, I'm still reading Zahn. Ascendancy. I'm a very slow reader. Not because I read slow, but just because I get so sidetracked. Yeah. Do you do the audiobooks? I do do the audiobooks. Yeah, Dude, but, you know, fire. but you know what? <laughs> I don't listen to them all that much because I'm just like doing other stuff. And I'm like, ah, you yeah, know. Yeah, right. you got it. It's weird because like you, yeah, no, I I'd rather, you gotta, I'd like, rather read. Time. I love the audiobook. Like I, I listened to the yeah. Dooku Jedi Lost audiobook. Absolute yeah. amazing. Like, it was great. It was like listening to a movie. Um, exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Dude, the sound effects, the music. Like, I love you know what those the problem things. Is? It's man. like that's when I was traveling lots and I would like listen to her on the plane and this and that. With COVID, I'm just at home and I'm like, if I'm True. at home, I'm sitting on the computer, I'm making content, I'm working, I'm live streaming, I'm something. Yeah. It's like, what, what, I don't have time to listen to something. It's, I should yeah. give it time. I should. But well, you know, I love dude. I love uh, listening to him when I'm on like a long car trip. But you're right. I haven't really taken many of those this year. <laughs> and then like sometimes I'll just put headphones on, shut all the lights off and just lay on the couch and just like just get absorbed into it, you know. Uh, but anyways, uh, the whole deal is in the Thrawn books, they talk about these aliens called the Grisk and the Grisk keep popping up out in the unknown regions and a lot of people think they are the new Lucasfilm canon counterpart to the, the Vong. Vong. Yeah. And so what some people think is going on is what they're going to set up with the Filoni verse is either going to take us into a version of the Vong War or actually then go into that that conflict with the Grisk and have all of these characters kind of together. Because like but one of the big reasons I think this is the Boba show. Like, why would they make a live action Boba show? It feels so weirdly out of place with all of this other stuff. You know I what think I mean? So that they can focus on uh, the remnants of the Empire. Do you know what time it takes place? So it's apparently going to run right from uh, this season of Mando 2. And I don't know how long it'll go. So I don't know much about the time places oh, of the wow. other so shows. It's, it's definitely post Empire. Oh yeah, 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's it's going to be in the vacuum period between uh, Jedi and Episode Seven. Yeah. Is this where? Is this a source you have, or? I mean, I've heard some things from some sources, but this has been widely reported, actually. So there's like a ton of different people that have reported different aspects of it, and then like it's interesting to me to see what matches up with the different reports. So like, you know, Grace Randolph. I know some people are like, oh, you know, but uh, bro, I, think I, she actually... I I I listened to her when she was like, oh, Mando trailer coming out. Yeah. Didn't well, it's out. funny that you should say that. <laughs> well, maybe I should tell you that off air. But and, um, and then now there's this drama with with apparent like mando season two or something and I'm oh just yeah, like, eh, yeah 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 i don't know man oh uh, hey we, well you know we can get into that if you want because i actually think there's let's something to let's get into yeah. everything yeah so nah, we're okay, here to so, chill so, so what's oh your by, by the way guys uh mark is busy on business uh for a little bit he'll be back though so um happy to have my boy here josh so um just all of you who, who were asking in the comments there. Okay, so, yeah. What was so, my thoughts on what? What do you think? I mean, do, do you buy any of the Pedro thing? You know the story? Yeah, apparently he wanted to have his face revealed more and be out of the helmet. And um, there, John Favreau and Dave Filoni didn't have any of that. And so he walked off set, apparently. I don't believe yeah. it. I think it's BS. You don't believe it? I don't. It's so ridiculous. Like, how could how yeah. I don't I don't believe he would do that. You know, he's got a good career, and why would he? Yeah. It's about the story. It's not about him. I don't think he's. Well, I don't so, know. Him, yeah. So yeah. So here's my thing on that. So I agree that like the characterization of it, as though he would be like, "You're not giving me what I want." Pouty pouty. I'm out, and then just walking away. Mm-hmm. I don't think that could legitimately have happened, but a version of that could absolutely have happened. So like for instance, um, he could have been sort of contractually obligated to be on set more and to be in the helmet more on set and then he's just over it and he's like you know get the doubles i'll be back for adr and then they're like nah bro but then he's like yeah bro and then walks off do you know what i mean so like a version of it could have still happened and i will tell you this i know for a fact that after they wrapped season one uh, this dude absolutely lobbied to be seen more and absolutely lobbied to get more money, as he should. I mean, you know, that's just the game. But I, I know for sure that was a big, big deal. Now, what I don't know 100% is, like, is Grace talking about the story that happened, like, last year and that was resolved and we're all good? Mm. Or was there another incident that happened and how are they cleaning it? Up because it's not as it's not like look the last thing Disney wants is for there to be drama on the Mandalorian it's like their crown jewel for Star Wars right, right. so they definitely don't want it to come out if it's true right right I don't so, know I I, I I mean I would I don't think we would ever get confirmation of that being true or not but uh, he just posted a picture with him in Fabro so I mean if there was really that bad of blood like I don't, or maybe he's just, dude, I don't know. I don't, I try, try not to dive deep into the rumors because at the yeah, end of the day, yeah. the rumors, and if you're not, as I said to you, if you're not wearing a mask and changing your voice, no one's going to believe you anyway. So <laughs> that's just the way it yeah, is. Yeah, 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 you know, for sure. Um, so I, I had tons is, uh, of rumors and leaks for uh, The Last Jedi and things like that, l- legit yeah. stuff that people would tell me about. Uh, but as I said, if you're not wearing a mask, you're not changing your voice, it's not legit. So. Or by a dartboard. It seems to be that if you're by a dartboard, you're also uh, in the know with that shit. Um, well, I, I, about... I like I like Mike Zero. I like Mike Zero. Hey, I don't. Hey, I, I don't I, not, well, not talking hey, about his content. Hey. I'm not talking yeah. about his content. I think he's a nice guy. But uh, okay, right on, right on. Um, so, what do you think about this whole thing? That like in the report they say halfway through the season there's going to be this massive tonal shift, and you will have episodes possibly with very little Mandalorian, maybe no Mandalorian, and John Favreau teased in the uh, Entertainment Weekly article, which predated the trailer and that story coming out, sort of setting fans up for very different stuff mm. in the back half of the season. So, if yeah, you I see heard that, that apparently that, in the, the second, yeah, so that would probably confirm is, is in the second half if they if we take attention away from the Mando and we go on to someone else. Right. Um, which I'd be cool with, man. I mean, it makes me think like, okay, maybe we're going to focus on Ahsoka. Dude, yeah. Well, you know. <laughs> okay, so one other thing that I have heard is that uh, so there was a big rumor that she was going to be 
in the trailer, obviously, right? Okay. Um, and there was a report that came out maybe a couple of weeks before the trailer dropped. And it said that they were shooting a scene with Ahsoka that people reported was specifically for the marketing. And it was her in a cantina with the blue lightsaber messing up like a couple bounty hunters or some people like that, right? Well, I've now been told that that scene is not for marketing. It is for the show. And if that's true and they're shooting additional photography with Ahsoka this late in the game, then, yeah, they could absolutely be putting more of her into the show than they originally anticipated. Or it could just be normal reshoot stuff, you know, I don't know. I hope, man. I hope we get more Ahsoka because it's a character that obviously, you know, we... We're all in love with her, but um, we've never seen her in live action, and I feel like especially now in this gap between the Empire falling and uh, the rise of the the New Republic and... Yeah. As we slowly transition into the First Order, um, what is she doing? I don't know what the hell she's doing, you know? What is she up to? And what happened to her after Rebels, where's Thrawn, where's Ezra, all the stuff. Yeah. So I, agree. I feel like there's a ton. If they want to take attention away from the Mando, I'm cool with that. Uh, just focus on characters that are, you know, really important. If they want to yeah. focus on Speen, cool. If they want to focus on Moff Gideon, I'm down with that too because I feel like when you get a show, let's say like Cassian Andor, which I know Mark wasn't a fan of and didn't think that would happen, I hope it happens because these separate small characters are doorways into a different time and they're doorways into covering different characters so Cassian Andor, yeah. Vader, Emperor, this and that um, and the time period is the Empire so if we go into the Mandalorian and then for the second half of the, the, the season he's not in there we can cover some other characters during this time which is awesome I feel like it's you know world building as they say and it expands everything makes it just that much larger so I'd be yeah. cool with that yeah I'd be very cool sure with that I would I'd be 100% down with that and I just got to ask because you made me think of this how do you feel about Disney ripping off your ideas to create the Mace Windu show now that they realize how hot Mace is with the fans oh I don't think they're ripping off my ideas I mean I, I think I think they're um look they I ripped off their ideas, if anything, right? So they own it all. Um, I can't say anything. There's nothing I can say. Uh, as for them bringing Mace Windu back in particular, well, you know, they, they saw how popular it was, and they're like, okay, you know what? Yeah, I guess we could bring him back instead of someone else. And, you know, Sam Jackson has always yeah. been saying that, hey, Jedi do survive long falls, big falls, and – uh, he talked to George about it, and George was like, yeah, I'm okay with you being alive. And that was it. That was our conversation. What? So, George said that for real? Yeah, yeah, from oh, from Sam's mouth. Cool. Yeah. Yo, are you at the uh, celebration when he put, sent, when uh, Sam Jackson sent in that video for the 40th anniversary? Was that, th- was that this last one? Yes. Uh, 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 it was two ago. It was like no, 2017. No, I wasn't at that one. No, but I, I saw it, though. I saw the footage. Where he put the video, and, and he was like, yeah, come on. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's well, kind of and, cool. And he was reaching out to the fans, and he's like, he's like it, it's your guys, that, it's you guys that can make this happen. Uh, like, he was just, it's, it is true. It's us that can make it happen. And, baby, I'm making it happen, let me tell you. True. I mean, um, true. But, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's cool. I, I, I don't know much about this rumor. Um, I just saw, like, a, a article cover it. With a picture, yeah, of- I think that one's pretty light. There's not a lot out there. If anything, it's in the beginning stages, like really, really early development. So they're just talking about it. But it is cool that they are finally uh, acknowledging and understanding what the fans want because it just felt for like for so long. Like just as an example, I was at, I've been to a lot of the celebrations, but I remember um, in Orlando being at a Marvel uh, Star Wars panel, right, mm. and the editor. At the, at the time was like literally asking the audience like who do you guys want to see in a in a Star Wars comic or whatever and like everybody was shouting Ahsoka like everybody wanted Ahsoka mm-hmm. and he's like she's not one of the options and like trying to like so all this other stuff and I was like even from then it took this long for them to yeah. figure out like hey people really like this character give us some more of this character um, and yeah I see that um possibly being mirrored in the Mace Windu thing, too. Um, Well, when I wanted to make the fan film, the first thing I said is like, okay, you know what? I have always had a crush on the idea of 
Mace coming back with unfinished because there's nothing cooler than Mace coming back after what has been done to him, yeah, and wanting. I wouldn't say revenge, but yeah, revenge. You know, and even though it's not the Jedi way, but let's say he's not a Jedi in this in this scenario. Let's say he is willing to do whatever it takes now that the world or the galaxy is on his shoulders, and yeah. really it's down to him. He is the last one that he knows of, and he's banded together a bunch of Jedi to come together and uh, rid the world of this this evil as they are the final hope. So. We'll see. We'll see sounds what happens. Dope. Yeah, we'll see what yeah, happens. We'll see dope. how uh, how he plays with Anakin's mind and uh, how Vader plays into that and what Mace really wants because it's more than a story of just. Uh, I'm gonna shut up. I'm gonna shut yeah, up. Yeah, you're about to give away the whole movie. Yeah, about to give away um, the whole thing, man. Yeah, no, that's uh, that's super cool, man. I'm um, looking forward to that for sure. Um, and I'm okay. looking forward to Disney's um, thing as well. Uh, do you think there's any chance that Mace will survive the show, though? I mean, what do you mean, survive the show? Like. It, because it seems like what they're going to do is have older Sam Jackson with this young kid, and it's all going to be like Princess Bride. But do you think there's oh, any right, right, right. chance okay. that they would give like us Mace back, like for real? So basically the story is that like there's a young Mace and there's an old Mace, and he is like telling the story or something like that? Is that... Yeah, like the old Mace, I think, is going to be like the narrator. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's cool. And, w- and what was your question? Do you think they would ever actually like bring mace back like could he ever actually still be alive in canon i would I mean, hope he'd be, so he'd be old but like i don't care I, i'm gunning for it i mean yeah. there, if look if they bring you mean bring him back into the mando into this why time period? not bro yeah okay well, then there's so much opportunity for them to basically uncover what he's been doing this entire time would he True. not want retribution? Would he not want to get revenge on Anakin and and the Emperor? So what's yep. he been doing this whole time since Set Luke him up has been Ahsoka too? Because like that citizen comment in Clone Wars, <laughs> like <laughs> right. I don't know about that, yeah. bro. So yeah. yeah, no, that would be really cool if they said, you know, yeah, there's a lot of untapped potential there for sure. That would yeah. be uh that would be really cool. Look, you like, know, I hate I, to like jump around, but like, what do you like? Do you think that like this this Feloniverse thing, man? Like, I I get this feeling, and I'm, I hate to be like super emphatic about it, but I think this is what we've been looking for for a while, man. Yeah, I think this is it. Like, yeah. this is this could be a turning point for a lot of fans, and just be like, wow, okay, like this is not only good, it's kind of mind blowing, and I feel m- good as a fan now. I have yet to see something that Feloni made that sucks. Or doesn't feel right. Star Wars. Um, I think you know with Star Wars, it's not like um, you know you you can you can jump around, and and don't get me wrong, I love Batman. Batman's you know my guy, but um, you can sell Batman to different directors and writers and this and that, and it'll still most likely be Batman uh, at the end of the day. Um, maybe not as you know authentic as you know the Dark Knight or or whatever, which whichever one's your favorite. But at the end of the day, it's still Batman. I feel like with Star Wars, you can't do that. You have to have someone who really understands, first, the lore. Second of all, the overall feeling. There's a certain, what's the word, like a je ne sais quoi about Star Wars. Like, it's just like a, like Mm a, I don't know, like a feeling. Like, you just, it feels like Star Wars or it doesn't. It just feels like a space movie that has a Star Wars filter over it. It's, Dave Filoni gets that. John Favreau gets that. Um, I think Taika Waititi gets that. Um... Bryce Howard, I think all these people, they get that. And they need to be the ones in charge. So uh, anything he does from here on, like I'm I'm supportive of, and I think uh, yeah. he is the true savior. Um, I don't know if he should be the president of Lucasfilm because I want him making the movies. I don't want him right. running the company. Um, yeah. I would love for him to be as high up in command as he can be in order to oversee all uh, all films, all projects, everything and uh make them according to his design but yeah you know give the go ahead on stuff but uh yeah yeah. no i'm with you i think um would it be weird if it was just on disney plus though like if that if we get all the glory on disney plus and then the movies i mean like the thing about the movies man i have no idea what they're doing with these movies like i i thought i knew at one time and I can't tell if like they've just completely changed their plans or they're putting in filler films until they can get to what they were going to do. 
And so, like, I don't know, man. Do you care? Here's what if it's... confuses me is that um, everything other than the sequels is being handled pretty well, in my opinion. The comics, the books. That's true, yeah. Um, the shows, all that stuff, like Clone Wars, you know, it, Mando, the comics, uh, Dooku Jedi Lost, Master and Apprentice. The books are, are amazing. But the sequel trilogy, I just almost, uh, from what I was reading from Bob Iger's book, is that it was, and you guys can go read it yourselves, it, it's that he was kind of like almost rushing to get a Star Wars movie. It's like, okay, you know what? Like, we're going to, okay, yeah, we'll take an extra year. We'll figure it out, whatever. But they didn't have a plan. And this jumping around of, you know, director to director, what is that? You know, yeah. at least have one writer, okay, direct, you know, whatever. You can have three different directors. Have one writer who figures it all out and has a consistent story that goes from A to B, A to C, A to Z, however many you want to make, and just yeah. make it make sense. Because it didn't make sense. It was just all over the place. You know, Force Awakens set it up pretty cool um, yeah. for Episode Eight, And then Episode Eight was in a completely different direction and it just didn't feel like Star Wars to me. And then episode nine was like, okay, we're trying to course correct. So it's like correct, we yeah. lost two movies, really. We only have episode seven. Yeah. And honestly, episode seven without the other two is like meaningless. So it's like for me, it's like really hard to even get into episode seven again because I kind of feel like when I – and I know that J.J. had like planned and had notes that he turned in or whatever. Yeah. But like Ryan was just completely uninterested in doing that, and Kathy had no intention of like forcing Ryan's hand at all. Like she's just totally infatuated with that dude's story, and was just like, "This is amazing," you know. Um, so like for me, it's like even hard to get into uh, the Force Awakens now. Um, but yeah, I agree with you. Most of the stuff that's ancillary is dope, dude. Like it's great. Like Rebels is incredible. Clone Wars is incredible. All like without fail literally every single one of the new canon novels that i've read has been incredible yeah so yeah and it's passionate people that really care about star wars i think it's it just sucks that all of that like stopped at the movies which is the most important shit i mean yeah. star wars started out as movies it's unique in that way yeah. you know what i mean yeah. it's unique in that way it's not lord of the rings it doesn't have uh, a book of a source material which maybe if we're being extra charitable, this is what Kathy was trying to say when she said there's no source material, is that, she, you know, maybe she was trying to say that, hey, this comes from a series of films that were kind of, you know, thrown together originally because George kind of, you know, he retcons his own stuff and, and, and he kind of made stuff up. As Absolutely. He yeah, he did. But there was actual like an overall theme and you didn't have different writers coming in. He was overseeing all of the operations. He oversaw yeah. one to six. You know, it was yep. his story. It was his child. It, you know, he didn't have someone come in there and be like, "Okay, yeah, let's let's write let's write episode five and have it take it completely." It's like, what? Why? What? Oh yeah, he wouldn't have let that. Fly. You know, and tell, the thing that tell, I think... telling Daisy like, "Oh yeah, we don't know who your lineage belongs to," so she has to really guess the whole time while she's I acting, know, and dude. fans just like rip her apart. But it's like it's not I her know. fault. It's dude, not her real. fault. It's Agreed. it's 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 not even JJ's fault. I don't think it's the people who are in charge of JJ. So if that's Kathleen Kennedy, well, then yeah. she needs to really assess what she's doing with Star Wars because it all falls on her shoulders. Or 100%. if there's someone I... above her on Disney's whatever team, then it needs to fall on like it there is always a higher up. It's like, "Okay, let me speak to your assistant manager. Let me speak to your manager. Let me speak to the owner." It's like it it goes higher and higher. So yeah. There's something that needs to be done there and uh you know, whenever we have Dave Filoni in in control, it's fine it's great yeah. i agree i agree with that there's no that that's division the way it's going. over the mandalorian no one is like divided like they are with the sequels that's very true yeah people pretty much universally love the show and it's actually reached what i think is so weird about mando is it's reached more casuals than i think they were ready for mm -hmm. i think like baby yoda is a phenomenon dude yeah and like all the people that watch mando i don't think they ever actually anticipated it to be as big as it was because they spend like a lot of money making like calculated marketing decisions to try to get more audience in these quadrants right i mean like there's a lot of that corporate move kind of stuff at disney and at all big Studios, but I think the thing that's weird is that like they tried so hard to get like Ray to work with you know all four quadrants, um, and it just didn't. And 
the Mando and Baby Yoda and even uh, you know Gina's character, I, I think are more universally loved mm-hmm. uh, by by normies. So it's yeah. just one of those things where I like this like Zen philosophy of like if you try to like grab a bunch of water out of a river and like clench it, it will all just fall out of your fist. And so there's no way to actually get the water other than to just put your hand in it and like be one with the water. So like Disney is just with the sequel trilogies is a series of like trying to grab that water. You know what I mean? And it's just like, they're dry and they don't understand why it's like, well, cause you can't grab that water. Like, that's not how that works, you know. So be water, my friend. Be water. Yeah, yeah. exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So there's still hope, though. I mean, I think that's at the end of the Absolutely. day, like, yeah. and that's why I'm so hyped on this Filoni verse. And I've been like trying to tell everybody that I can that, like, no, we're okay. Like, you know what I mean? Because you know we have a oh, lot. Oh, I think of we're okay, that... man. I think we're fine. I think you know the worst is behind us. <laughs> ask Ask me again in a few years. But I think the worst <laughs> is behind us. Um, as a Star Wars fan, I think you know. Look. They want to make money. Yeah. They bought Star Wars not because they're Star Wars fans per se, but because they want to make money. Hundred percent. I mean, it's the biggest IP in the world. And they did make money. They did make money. They, yeah, they absolutely. did. Yeah, not as much as they could have, uh, but they still are making you know bank, and yeah. they can make more bank if they just open their eyes, as politely yeah. as I can put it. You know, well, everything that I've heard is that they're aware of the mistakes. Like, it, basically, like if there's if people like you and I can figure out that Star Wars is on a decline, and we can figure out the box office, and and we can compare those numbers, like we can be sure that Disney has analytics companies and really smart people that they've paid to know this. So they know they're on. I the heard decline. they have a team that literally just sits around all day on computers and watches the internet and what people are saying about Star Wars. So they're watching. Us, mm-hmm. they watch yeah. every mm-hmm. Star Wars channel. They watch every Star Wars news article on Google. Apparently, they have, and that's rumor. But I mean, I mean, I, 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 uh, I, I think that's probably not very far off from the truth. Mm-hmm. Um, they, they're definitely paying attention. But the thing is, uh, most importantly, I think they just recognize that they made some moves that didn't satisfy their hardcore fan base and they also didn't manage to tap into a bunch of new audiences in the way that they thought they could yeah i I think they underestimated in like 2015 2016 how much of like the normie audience was actually driven by like the sweaties like by like people like us Mm -hmm. so they once like that core support sort of eroded i believe they were probably surprised at how the ballooned up you know uh normie support also went away yeah but that's just that is the way that it is it's like we drive that cultural thing and then we sort of nurture it uh into what it is for like the normies like like my parents my friends they don't know about star wars unless i'm telling them about star wars you know Mm -hmm. so as that hardcore audience goes so goes your uh your weather main of profitability i think so you know, when I left uh, the Rise of Skywalker, there was this gentleman who, you know, as you leave theaters, you're you're bumping shoulders with people, and um, towards the exit, and there was this older gentleman. He must have been in his 60s or something, my dad's age, and so he got to see uh, the originals in theaters, and he randomly turns to me and he's like, "What'd you think?" I'm like, "You know what? I actually really liked it. I thought it was pretty good." And he's like, "Yeah, way better than that last shit that Ryan Johnson made." And I was like. <laughs> Okay, so it's not just internet people that think episode eight was. It's like okay, a real person is actually. I don't even know. Is it's like okay, wow, all right. So you know, it's, that's it's, the hardest one to get people to realize too. Is like because again, in the bubbles that you and I kind of run in, like there are certain groups out there that if you say, "Hey, look, uh, most of the normies don't like Last Jedi," and then they freak out and they're like, "Oh, it's all fandom menace or it's all rah rah," and it's like, no, like, dude. There's a bunch of these people that don't even know what any of this internet stuff is, mm-hmm. and they don't like that film. Like, I'm telling you, it's true. I was buying, you know? I was buying weights uh, before this whole COVID happened because I, I anticipated something would go down, and I was like, okay, you know what? No. I, I got to buy hey, some weights really? and and get some get 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 some weights at home at least. Um, the guy was talking. He's like, uh, somehow it came on the topic of Star Wars. I don't know how it just did. And uh, the guy was from Brazil, thick accent. Um, I was like, he's like, oh, yeah, no, I love Star Wars. I just don't like these new ones. 
And I was like, yeah. I was like, oh, what, what is he? he's like, I don't know, man. It just doesn't feel the same. It just doesn't feel good. And I'm like, oh, yeah, well, I agree. So it's it's yeah. not, these are like real people that, and, and this isn't, you know, what I don't like about it is like you can't have an opinion without, for some reason, starting a war. It's like, okay, I genuinely don't like this. That doesn't mean that you're full of crap. It doesn't mean that your opinion is invalidated. It doesn't mean that you don't matter. I would love for you to love it. I would love to love it myself. Um, but let me have my opinion. It doesn't mean that we have to be at war. And yeah. this is a problem, I think, that needs to be addressed. And it's uh, it's such an issue that it's 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 just a headache at this point. You know, it's oh. like I, I don't even want to talk much anymore about the sequels because it's like it just turns into a, like, uh, oh, you're a gatekeeper. Oh, you're elitist. It's like, no, dude, I just have an opinion, you know. You know, I'm, I'm not saying, you know, screw you for your opinion. I'm not saying, look, I have my opinion. You think it's an amazing movie. That's great. It's a freaking movie. Relax. Like, yeah. people can have other opinions. I think um, just to sort of, like, add on to that, too, is that, like, I've, I've, I am also on an arc, and I know you're sort of on the same arc of the rose-colored glasses kind of coming off, right? And so yeah. the further you get away from it, the more you're like, oh, snap. And for me, like, dude, I've done videos literally titled Ray is not a Mary Sue. And here's why. And I've yeah. done videos that are like, you know, uh, this is why Luke's arc in Last Jedi is actually brilliant and stuff like that. So I've been that guy. Yeah, 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 yeah I know. Right. Oh, show's got to go outside. I'll see you. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. So I've been that guy. Right. But then it's like the 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 more messed up part is that like now. And this really happened on the way to rise because like I, I had the plot leaks pretty early and was like, oh, my God, no. Um, and uh, people even more so, I don't think, can really handle like that people's opinions can change. Mm -hmm. And so like it's so weird. I, I get people saying that I've like, you know, either like fallen to the dark side or that, you know, my fandom menace friends are like you know, whispering sweet honey in my ear They've or whatever. They've your mind. Exactly, yeah, right? And it's like, I can't just now change my opinion. It's just kind of like what you're saying is mm -hmm. like, now it's like, okay, well, I think it's actually particularly important for people like me to speak up because like, we need to be like, mm, nah, some of these things these people were saying was real. We all need to take a step back, take a breath. And, uh, uh, you know, what should we do now as a fan base? But you're right. It can't, it doesn't work like that. Yeah. It works like, uh, well, I may have changed my opinion slightly on the sequels. And then it's like, uh, Indiana Jones, you just got the darts in the back. It's yes. Like, yeah. Like all and, up. And, the... Yeah. The ball coming down. It's like, it's like, oh, yeah, you're changing dude. your tune. You're just, yeah. It's like. Yeah, dude, people change their minds. Like, are you the same person you were a year ago? Hell no. Right. So, and if you are, yeah. well, whatever. But th things change, man. Yeah. People change, ideas change. And after the whole thing with uh, John Boyega and, and Daisy Ridley mainly, I'm like, dude, okay. It's not just speculation anymore. It's not just me thinking, you know, The Last Jedi sucked. There really was zero attention into what was going on. And yeah. if the actors themselves who firsthand, you know, know everything, then uh, behind the scenes, then what the hell am I trying to have rose colored glasses for? Nah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, like it's man, they've been hit hard with that, too. I mean, that's the first interview Daisy did since Rise. Mm. You know what I mean? And like, I don't even think she thought that saying that would cause the uproar that it did. She was just speaking plainly for the first time maybe yeah. without reservation about this right? right um and people just literally lost their minds now i know a lot of people were saying like oh it's not that big of a deal and, and i and i and, and to be honest with you like if you really have that opinion and you believe that that's totally cool but i actually do think it's a big deal like it number one it shows that even back then for force awakens there was this kenobi idea but there were different ways they were going to think about doing it so basically jj literally made an entire movie building up a MacGuffin that he didn't fully understand mm -hmm. so like you know and i'm not like trying to go super hard on the dude but like that is no way to start a trilogy mm -hmm. i think you know um and so yeah man i think it's a super big deal and then leading into rise i mean they these people were out here telling us you know, and my personal thing is, and I don't know, like, if if you want to like talk about this or not, but my personal thing that I can't stand is the Carrie Fisher thing, dude. Like, the fact that JJ said, like, told us a lot that it was gonna look great, that we were gonna, she was gonna be a very special part of the movie, that like, 
this, that, second, and the third. We were sold this thing uh, with Leia, and it's literally so so trash that they had to cut out all the Kelly Marie Trans stuff. You know what I mean? Because they is that what happened? Yeah, Kelly shot a lot of scenes with just the Carrie ghost, and uh, they just didn't work, dude. And so they cut most of Kelly's stuff out because of that. Um, and then there's narratives around that, you know, and people build their little narratives and go into their little tribes and all that. But like the bottom line is like, they were literally just like putting their fingers in all of the holes on the dam and just trying to move forward without really, you know, without really having a plan. And, and you know, the other thing is too, it could have worked. All of this stuff could have happened and then the films could have come out flawless and been really compelling and really great. Um, it's not such a foreign concept. Let I mean, me, let me, let me, this comment caught my eye. I'm going to address it right yeah. now. Blockheads Inc. Bro, you make a video in 2019 saying you love The Last Jedi. I don't think I've ever made a video saying I love The Last Jedi, but that you weren't a shill. You're recently, you're clearly just trying to gain favor with what is popular. Go look up the vid, guys. It's called Real Talk. Yeah, go look up the vid and you'll see what I'm talking about. So thanks, <laughs> Blockheads. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, like, come on. Like, that's exactly what we're talking about, though, right? It's exactly what we're talking about. You're just one of those people that's like, oh, no, like, your favor. It's like, dude, I don't need favor at this point. I make a video, yeah. it gets views. I don't care. It's not about views anymore. <laughs> it's just about me enjoying Star Wars and giving you my real talk. So if you want to misinterpret that for your own narrative, good for you. Have a good day, buddy. Appreciate yeah, for it. for sure, man. These, these peeps, though, I mean, they really do view it in such battle lines. Like, think about what that dude just said, though. Like, you know what I mean? He's basically just like... You're battling. You're you're yeah. singing. You're you're pounding a war drum for the other side now. It's like there no, no, dude. There drums, there ain't bro. no war drum. There's like, no other side. I am my own side. I stand alone. I've always stood alone. So, your narrative doesn't matter. You can spam it six, seven times. It doesn't matter. Like here, I I saw you, dude. Like here's your attention. There you go. But. My opinions are my opinions, and what I said in time is what I said in time. What I'm saying now is who I am now and how I am now. So. Is what and it you know is. What else do I'm willing to say that in five or ten years from now, I may look at the sequels in a different light again. I True. might be at a different stage in my life. I might uh, just be fond of the memories that I formed around those films. I might enjoy those films in a different way at a different time in the future. Uh, the jury's not like the jury's out on that. And as a human being, like you can you can do that. It's okay. Like you yeah. should give yourself permission to just grow as as life happens and yeah. uh where i'm at right now is like not only am i not a fan of the sequels but i do feel a measure of regret for how hard i went to bat for them because i think if i hadn't or maybe i had realized sooner maybe we could have gotten better movies i don't know you know like well, I just, I, it, for me it was the naive belief that a company that bought Star Wars would take it seriously. <laughs> right? Right. Well, so, I mean, you said it, bro. They they were, they were about money. I, now, I will say this. if you, it, It's interesting. I would like to go back to the thing you said about Bob Iger's book because um, it's he essentially kind of says in that book that, like, they kind of overpaid for Star Wars, right? <laughs> so... <laughs> like according to him he thinks that they overpaid for star wars and so the concept for them was hey look we just overpaid for a business that's not cash flowing currently it literally has nothing that's out there making money and so like we need to make this film asapsually right um yeah what are your thoughts i i you know there i had a lot of issues with that book the whole first part is just about him talking about how well trusted he was by steve jobs and this and that yes, to yes. build up the narrative that he is a great guy and it's like okay cool man that's that's awesome man steve jobs liked you that's good but that's like don't use that you know yeah um then the whole part about him i don't want to say swindling but just talking to george about um you know george you're getting old um you don't have any heirs um What's going to happen? You know, yeah. opens up the park just for him, private lunch. Mm -hmm. What? Like, yeah. And then George so you like, think it, like, you think it was like a deal with the devil kind of like, that's kind of the way you kind of, why, kinda why, why did George go on, uh, Harry Rosen or whatever that guy's name was? And, uh, the say, yeah, comments, what, yeah. You say, look, I, I sold star Wars to the white slavers. The thing that's wild is he does feel that way. 
and he walked back on it, but he absolutely feels that way. And the thing, another thing that sucks is like George is under a non-disparaging clause. He cannot actually come out and talk about how no, he actually he feels can't. about this. And that's, that was written but in I the think, book too. Right. But I think you and I both know people that know George. I know people who know George. Yeah. And uh, I would say Firsthand. his view. Yeah, his views of the films are not positive. That's the most I'd probably say about it. They are not positive. Mm. Um, Why else wouldn't he be at the premieres? Right, exactly. I saw yeah, something the- on Reddit where uh, a, a fan sent him something, some letter to his assistant, and she said she sent a letter back. The, the picture is out there. I don't know where to find it, but um, it's on Reddit somewhere. And uh, <laughs> his assistant says, and it's signed, you know, Lucasfilm and all that stuff. It's uh, it says George agrees with you and feels that the movie's finished. The story was told um, from one to six. It's a perfect ending. Yeah, it's a it's a perfect ending, dude. Yeah. perfect endings are rare, bro. Yeah. So yeah, they should have probably never tried to do that. No, they, they should have, they should have but to... they should have taken his treatment. Mm, but what about how weird that treatment could have been? What, what do you, how do you feel about that? Because they, they say story. that it, true, it's his true, story. but if you're a, if you're a mega corporation that just overpaid for a company and then George Lucas comes to you now, now look, the prequel still made bank. So like, I'm not saying I agree with this, I'm just playing devil's advocate, but like, what do you do when that guy hands you the microbiology movie? You know what I mean? Like, what do you, mm. what do you do with that? Like. Do you think they could have maybe incorporated it or like tried to like pull out some of the mythology from it? I mean, first of all, we don't know exactly what the stories were, right? Um, but the word is Here's the that thing. they were weird. Here's the thing. Let's say they took it and they said, okay, this is George Lucas' story. This is George's material. He directed it, did all this stuff. Um, and it flops. It tanks. People mm-hmm. are outraged, like right now. Then Disney comes in and says, okay, we're going to make our own stories. Then fans will turn on George and they'll be like, okay, Disney is going to save us. It would be a completely different story now. That's just how fans are. But I think it would have been amazing. I think it would have really told the story and would have continued the story. And it would have been great. I mean, the the story that they took for the sequels had elements of what George wanted anyways. There was a character named Kira who turned out to be Rey. Yeah. It was about the children of Skywalker. Right. So she was she should have just been a Skywalker, like an actual Skywalker. Yeah. I think that would have improved the the trilogy a lot. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff that could have improved it, but you know what? Yeah. Eh. Oh well. Do you it's have done like now. one Do you have like one thing that like you really wish would have happened or like that you really cuz I do. I don't know if you have one thing. Uh yeah, I would have Okay, so this is how this is one way I would have episode 7 start. A sudden flash, and the screen just goes white, and you see someone running through, I don't know, let's say uh, a forest or some, some, there's some action going on somewhere. I haven't really thought of it meticulously, because whatever. Um, yeah. And we see it is Luke running through the forest moon of Endor right after the destruction of the Death Star, where him and the rebels have to fight the crashed stormtroopers at, that have landed on that planet, on that moon. Right after you know everything is just, and you can see it in the background. It's all it's it's there's just freaking smoke everywhere in the sky. It's at this point it's fallen, but he is now with his lightsaber and he's just like decimating stormtroopers and everything. And then there's like some sort of problem, whatever, and it just goes on from there. But that's how I would have started it, and that could have been a flashback. And then we could have flashed forwards to him teaching his students in his Jedi temple. Yeah. That that sounds really dope, and I almost don't even want to tell you mine now because that was way too fucking cool. Oh, okay. But uh, I wish Ray would have taken Kylo's hand. I really wish Ray would have taken Kylo's hand. Oh yeah, it would have been cool. Yeah, it would have been it would have been so refreshing. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It would have been a totally different thing. I think it could have really marked this trilogy as its own thing instead of like the hack job uh, skeleton Frankenstein thing that it is now. Um, And it would have been really compelling. I think one of the problems with nine is that they essentially use the first part of the movie to build hype for the other part of the movie because there's no hype. Like there's no real crazy threads (laughs) after seven. You know what I mean? After eight, I was like, I I remember sitting, (laughs) we're sitting in the theater. I'm just like, what is that? The end? (laughs) Is that it? Like, yeah. 
I was the first one in that theater. I was the last one to leave. I remember there were popcorn people coming up, coming to the janitors coming to clean up, and I'm yeah. literally sitting there just dumbfounded. I'm just like, yeah. "What the hell just happened, dude? Snoke's dead. Luke's dead. Yeah. Ray closed the door on Kylo. I guess that's it. What is this? <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, what, yeah. what? What is there to even be excited about for Episode Nine? Like, what? And I tried so hard. I remember going home that night, and I was just so unhappy, and I was just so depressed even at the story, and I was just like, this is, what the hell is this? And I tried to make the best of it, because I didn't want to fall into the negativity hole that I was already falling into. And I'm like, okay, you know what? There must be something here. Let's try to problem solve. Let's try to really figure the puzzle out. And I was trying to look at it from a a perspective that they had some idea of what was going on and they're just pulling the wool over our eyes they're just making it that much bigger of a exciting reveal for the next one of something that's going to be super like just oh my god wow this sets it up really good and i ran with that idea that i had in my mind that this was legit and there was you know a premedicated idea and plan and story and there wasn't yeah it's tough. I, you know, I'll say just to add a like sprinkle a little bit of positivity in. I agree with you. There's one thing about Last Jedi, though, is that I envy the first time I watched it like that experience because it really and truly did just shock me over and over again. And I didn't know like what was going on. And I do remember that being sort of a thrilling, if not, you know, scary and confusing experience. I do wish I could go back and watch it for the first time again. I think it's a movie that's designed to be incredible or at least really engaging the first time you watch it. Um, But I don't know if you had this experience, but for me, as I watched it more and more, the things that I hated, I hated way more. And the things that I loved, I kind of like, like dwindled distance. Yeah. Like I was like, yeah. Oh, yeah, because there's stuff that, like, I really, like, the the Leia thing, I hated it, like, the Mary Poppins scene, I hated it the moment I saw it, and it literally only got worse. And by the way, what the hell was John Williams doing in that scene? That music is absurd. John Williams is the master, and he has literally made almost every weird thing in Star Wars work since Star Wars was a thing. But whatever that was, that music choice, that did not make that scene work. Yeah, I'm not going to play, I, I don't remember. I don't remember what the it's like, what the song. Da, da, da. It's like got this really weird like this <laughs> piano. Probably what what Ryan wanted. It probably was, yeah. Yeah. You know? Um but you know, I think in some ways you and I have similar feelings about 9 where I, I my gut my first reaction after watching it was very positive because mm-hmm. I liked that it put the toys back on the shelf properly. Yeah. Uh and I think that we mistook that sigh of relief for oh my god thank god the toys are back on the shelf with actual enjoyment of what was being offered yeah you know what i mean yeah 100 percent. i remember coming home and i'm like dude this was a great movie and all because it fixed luke i teared up when he was smiling i could almost see you know i could literally see the actor of mark hamill behind luke skywalker happy and tearing up himself as he was lifting that x-wing yeah and it just it broke my heart what they did to him in episode eight. You could tell, like, even in interviews, you don't have to be some, some sort of psychologist. You can just see how unhappy he was in interviews um, with everything, and he was just forced to be there. And then yeah. all of a sudden, they, like, shut his mouth and tell him, like, oh, you can't say this, you can't say that, and, ah, whatever, man. Look, yeah. just 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 put Dave Filoni in charge. We won't have any problems, you know? No. Hell, put Sam Witwer in charge. True. That's a dude that knows his Star Wars. Um, so let me ask you this then, um, because, you know, we've kind of dipped into the therapy session that is, uh, you know, talking mm-hmm. about the sequels. But do you think uh, maybe under new leadership, you know, definitely under new leadership, but would you want to see a continuation? Do you want to see an episode 10? Do you want to see Ray's story continue? Where where are you at with that? I, I want to see I want to go back. I want to see six to seven. That's yeah, yeah. And That's don't, kind of don't, exactly what I think the Filoni verse is. Yeah, don't, be, don't and don't play it into this whole. We gotta make it into Luke in Episode Eight. It's like no. 
You don't. Just yeah. ignore that ever happened. Yeah, just do your thing. Let it be its own thing. Let Luke be an absolute Jedi Grandmaster badass from six to seven. And then, you know what? Let seven, eight, nine be their own thing. And that's that. So you what you don't want at all like a continuation? I don't care anymore. About those characters and that and that arc or No, I just I don't care anymore. Yeah. Yeah. I don't care anymore. I think they could make I think actually interestingly, seeing some of these characters in the grandfather role could actually be really good for them. So like Ray as a character when they're trying to make her work as the protagonist just didn't work. But Ray as like a very interesting sort of shock value cameo at a certain part of a story taking place in the future or Ray being the mother of some kids that have kids that are Jedi or something like that. I actually, despite all of my feelings towards the sequel trilogy, would still enjoy that. And I do think it could potentially help because I think even though, you know, you and I are in this place, dude, there's still a lot of people that really like those movies. So absolutely. Yeah, I don't think it's necessarily the best way for them to. um to just act like those characters would never do anything moving forward. You know what I mean? Hey, man, if they want to make those movies more power to them, I'll watch them, but, you know, I'll watch them once. Yeah. Unless it's, Unless, like, a very compelling it's and it makes right. sense and it's good. You know, the only yeah. the only issue I had with the sequels is that it didn't make sense. None of it made Like, Rey is an aimbot. She's perfect. You know, yeah. the, like, Kylo is the, the grandson of – well, he is a Skywalker – He's a half yeah. Skywalker, and he sucks. Like, what is this? Yeah, He's constantly whining. Weird. Like, yeah. what is this? You know, and I made this point in videos all the time, but, like, what's so fascinating about this is they actually gave Kylo the beats as a character that they should have given Rey. And you can see this manifest mm. in how pissed off people were that they killed Ben Solo, and they're really not – they don't care. Like, it's funny, man. Even Raylos don't really, like, get down with Ray like that. They're not really that into Ray. It's more about Ben. You know what I mean? And so by trying to sort of protect her – I don't know, by, dude. I've seen a lot of people, like, just obsessed with Ray, which is fine. For real? I don't care. Well, yeah. but I have not, but uh, – I don't see I'm, any Anakin shippers ever. Maybe it's past Anakin its prime. Sh- yeah. Well, you know the meme, right? The meme about shipping him with Ahsoka is like a death sentence. Have, do, you, do, you, do you mess with those memes it's at all? It's weird. No. It's yeah, so like weird. it's online, like it, it, on prequel memes and stuff like that. Like, uh, yeah. Something oh, I know like, it's I know it's popular. I made a, I had to I actually was requested multiple times to make a fan fiction on what if Anakin fell in love with Ahsoka or something. And it was just very strange. Really? It was very strange Dude, to they're write. They're trolling you by yeah. trying to get you to do that. Yeah, I, I did it. Yeah, years ago. Yeah. What? You yeah. did it. Yeah, it was it was three or four years ago. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. I tried to make sense of it as much as I could, but um, <laughs> it was just weird. But I hey, yeah, they loved it, man. They were like, okay, this is kind of cool, and some people were like, oh yeah, that's pretty weird. Yeah, man. I don't know. I think I think that uh, that probably could have happened. I don't know. Uh, Natalie Portman's a pretty fine uh, specimen, though. It'd be hard to uh, she's a, give that up. She's a great actress. Um. <clears throat> yes, that's what I meant. <laughs> you know Ahsoka, it's nasty. What? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, dude, it's, it's hate it, dude. I'm telling you, people hate it. They get triggered by that. Yeah, yeah, a lot of people get triggered by that. I've seen some weird images on Google, that's for sure. Oh, God, don't go too far down that don't scroll. Go, I know, don't go too far there. Um, woot, woot, <laughs> Sam Whitwer, yeah. What are your feelings on Squadrons? Are you excited for that? I'll play it. You don't think it's going to be, like, real, real good? or? Yeah, I think it'll be fun. I'm actually pretty excited for it, dude. Yeah, I think it'll be all right. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm pretty pumped. I think it's going to be uh, pretty cool. I like the cross-play a lot. So I'm sure you try to play with, like, fans and subscribers and stuff. Yeah. But that can get, like, really annoying, you know, if, like, you're playing an Xbox game or a PlayStation game or a computer yes. game and you can't all, you know. Yeah. So uh, the cross-play from... Uh, from squadrons will hopefully solve that so yeah i know a lot of people in the in, in our community are pretty excited for it yeah and i think crossplay is a big thing going forwards but i don't know i'm not crazy excited about it i played squad i played rogue squadron a lot when i was a little kid um really, man. yeah that's it's it's a piloting game it's cool but it's you know 
Battlefront no 2, micro- Battlefront 2 promised uh, no break microtransactions. Battlefront 2 promised us that we'd be following the story of uh, the Empire, and then all of a sudden, you know, she changes her tune like that. It's like true. Why the hell? Just stick with well, it. Well, her dad was kind of a butthole, though. He was a butthole, but I mean. I don't know. The they they, they the built all the trailers that. up to be like following. Oh yeah, like follow the story of the empire, and it's like, okay, but we didn't. In the end, she just turns into the good guy. It's like, all right, whatever. True, true. I I mean, I thought that uh, that strangely enough, that campaign gives us one of the best versions of Luke that we've had under Disney. Um, in the campaign, that mission that he has with uh, the Imperial guy or whatever, where he finds the um. The compass that takes him to Octu. You remember that like, scene? I thought that was yeah. I thought that was interesting. Yeah, I really liked it. I was like, wow, that's like actually Luke. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like it, it felt like Luke. It, yeah, that was absolutely. That was a very good model. Yeah, for what they probably should have done. Yeah, with the real <laughs> with Luke. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I agree. Oh well, it is what it is. Uh, it Star is Wars with the Mando is. Mondays teased. Mando season two will be. Eight to nine episodes. Oh, interesting. Finally, a stream with Theory and the Goat Josh. Uh, who's the sexy guy on the left in the glasses? Love the channel, Star Wars Theory. Stay righteous. Thanks, buddy. Um, a, two of the br- best right here. Love that y'all are linking up. Keep up the Fuego content, gents. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Lost my spot here again. Admitting ignorance here. At what point did GL inform Hamill that Vader was Luke's father? So, he informed him in episode five. And he was the only one that knew it. Was Mark the only one that knew it? Yeah, it was Mark, George, and uh, one other person. Because the guy didn't even deliver that line on set. No, so, he said, I killed your father. So yeah. no one knew it except for Mark. Wow. But in Daisy's uh, situation, He's, no one yeah. knew it. <laughs> At all. <laughs> yeah. No one. Not the writers. Not Daisy. You know, tell, nobody. Uh, did he tell Mark to try to get a, a good reaction then? Like to try to just get that emotion out of him? I would guess. I mean, I, yeah. I assume. Because that you know, was Kirshner, right? That was the directing at that point. I think so it was Kir- him. Yeah, it was, I think it was George Kirshner and, uh, and Hamill. Interesting. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of people don't know that because that film empire of dreams is basically like a george lucas propaganda piece i love that documentary but it is essentially a george lucas propaganda piece it it, it would it would have you believe that like george had this immaculate plan uh of star wars and like only did the one movie you know and then like kept everything to himself and it's just like that is clearly not look movies change their tune all the time you you got got rewrites you do just different things to fix the story that's normal but you have a plan there is a consistent plan you don't go into it and have like a bunch of different writers that are like apparently episode eight was written as episode seven was being finished or or yeah he or, wrote it i, off I don't the know script. yeah he didn't write it based off the movie he wrote it based off the script which is why the dice are in there because originally in jj's script there the the dice played a bigger role um and yeah that's a that's a stupid way to make movies you know what i mean so yeah 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 I don't know, and it, it's not a it's not a Disney hating thing. It's a it's a Star Wars loving thing, you know, and we just want our movies to embody the legacy of the person who created it, which is George Lucas. And you know, we're not going to be like, okay, now it's a new owner. It's like, it's like, okay, your parents divorce, and your mom gets a new boyfriend that moves in, and this guy has completely different rules. It's like, what? Yeah, yeah. Like, no, you don't tell me. I live here. This is my house, okay? Like, you don't tell me what to do. Like, this yeah. is not how this works. You know, some people would say that George did ultimately sell, though. You know what I mean? And so he did yeah. relinquish that control, you yeah. know? so He didn't want to. There was a part in that Bob Iger book where he's like, you know, uh, he, he, we were not going to pay you $4 billion, uh, and you're still going to be owning everything and running everything. That's not how this uh, works. Yeah. Well, that is. Yeah. I think that the and that line I actually like at, as a, someone who is fascinated with business, I completely understand. Like yeah, you can't sense. buy. Sure. Yeah, of course. Like I'm going to buy everything, but you still call the shots. Well, like, what I'm you saying still control is, is George was so invested still in the story is that, OK, he's like he's like, I know how I think what he's trying to say is like, OK, you can you can own all the whatever, but I know how to make you the most money because I know the story. 
and I know how to take the story into where it's supposed to go and to how it'll how it'll properly sh make sense from the last six movies that I made because it comes from him. It's like you can't they didn't even use any of his ideas or anything. It's like what the hell, man. Well, they're also they were really shell shocked uh, about the prequels, and and so they were really concerned of doing like prequel stuff again, which to me, honestly. The prequels that are loved today like <laughs> well they are absolutely loved today and actually even back then they made a ton of money so i don't quite understand uh the hesitation exactly other than the fact that i know jj was a big time prequel hater and so i think really re oh for sure dude that dude has no love for the prequels now maybe you know this? nowadays well, because he made comments about uh, the lightsaber fighting. He made comments about, uh, I think actually, when we could look this up, I think he had made comments publicly about the prequels before he ever was signed on to do Star Wars. Like, I'm pretty sure it's out oh. there that he was a big not liker of that stuff. Interesting. Um, and then if you look at Force Awakens, the, like, the only prequel-esque stuff is on Hosnian, and it gets eviscerated yeah so it, it, a lot of fans felt like this was jj's shot at um the prequels and by the way all these people out there that think like oh jj wouldn't do that and jj's not doing this that, and that dude jj is one of the most petty human beings that you could come across like he's he is very good at presenting an image and he is very good at playing the game but from what i have heard it's not that he's a bad guy. That's not. I don't want to mischaracterize him. I always liked he, him. I always thought he was. I don't know. I just seemed seemed like he was chill and a nice dude. Yeah. Yeah, you know? and I'm sure that he is nice and chill, unless you cross him or unless he's got like an agenda or something like that. But from what I understand, he's completely self obsessed and uh, yeah, kind of uh, kind of an egomaniac. Where'd you but hear that from? But then again, he is J.J. Abrams. You know. Where'd you hear that from? Well, uh... Some pe some some person that I heard it from I can't necessarily say, um, and then a lot of conjecture. So you know, like I I don't know anybody that like directly knows him, um, but I know people that have worked with him, and uh, yeah, he's he's sort of like a my way or the highway. But he's one of those Hollywood type people that like he won't denigrate you. He'll like very happily tell you we're not going to do your idea and you have to do this. Do you know what I mean? Well, like I mean, he's if he's really in command, good. that's fine. I could see that. And yeah. the reason I don't I don't buy into rumors anymore of what people think about people is because uh, people talk a lot of shit about me and they don't know sure. me. So it's like once you see that firsthand, um, you don't buy into what people say about people anymore uh, mm. unless there's actual evidence and proof. So that's where I stand now. So it's like, right. it's like, eh, he might be a nice guy. Eh, he might be a bad guy. I don't really care. Just give me good Star Wars movies. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I definitely don't think he's a bad guy. And, like, his relationship with uh, John Bay Boyega is pretty cool. Like, it's mm -hmm. cool that those dudes are homies, and it's cool that those dudes are boys. Um, but, uh, yeah, I've heard from uh, definitely enough people that I trust that, like, I'd be weary um, – uh, of that dude, but I mean, like, I'll probably never cross that dude's path. You know what I mean? So, like, it's all good. Nah. Like, we're we're yeah. all uh, small fish. Yeah, man. And plus, <laughs> like, we're never leaving our houses again anyway. So don't yeah. worry about it. We're not it's even fish. We're 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 like plankton. I don't even know what we are. No, yeah. uh, we're just dudes on YouTube. We're just fans. Uh, love yeah. the channel, Star Wars Theory. Thank you, buddy. Um, hey, Theory and new guy. Hope you're well. <laughs> just saw an article. I'll take it. What the? Uh, just saw an article saying that Revenge of the Sith almost broke Star Wars. Well, fair enough. Uh, you are two of my favorite people in the geekdom today. Nice. The concept That's of Luke's good. arc is The Last Jedi was good, but they didn't give enough info and how he got to the point of nearly killing Ben. Hubris isn't enough. Yeah. Agreed with that. Yeah, yeah. what are we just going to use hubris in every single... <clears throat> trilogy what like okay that's how darth maul dies that's how anakin dies when well, that's how luke does this yo that's and cool. i'm totally good with him having that moment he has a similar moment in jedi mm -hmm. he almost kills vader he could have right and then he sees the metal hand and all that yeah. so like i'm good with that it's just that it's just not properly executed and honestly like i have less problem with that than i do with uh him just being an overall coward it just doesn't make sense yeah, it like, doesn't add up as Luke. 
Uh, and that's what Mark Hamill said. It's like, okay, well, a Jedi wouldn't do this. He wouldn't run away. He wouldn't, wouldn't leave his sister. He wouldn't leave his friends. He would just go away for maybe six months, recollect, and come back stronger. And it's like, well, Especially yeah. that Jedi. That guy? Yeah. That guy would not know. The that most hopeful in dude the in the galaxy. He would, yeah, 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 I agree. He would I never, agree. ever try to kill his own nephew. It's like, okay, here's my father who killed children, who killed literally the, pretty much the entire galaxy full of innocent civilians. But, hey, you know, my, my nephew's having some dark thoughts. Yeah. Uh, yeah, let's just kill him. Yeah. Isn't that kind of interesting? Now that, I think, now that I think about that moment, though, doesn't that sound a little bit more like Twitter today? People are like, just get him, you know. What yeah, I mean? like, yeah, yeah. They freak Cancel. out, and it's like, get I can't canceled, believe you baby. Would do that. It's yeah. like, mm, I think we can believe that. Um, they should have just had Snoke like poking in his ear or something with that scene, bro. Like, why didn't they at least give the out of like the dark side had something to do with that? You know. Apparently, in the comic, they did. So in the in the yeah, comic, supposedly, that's... did you see that? That it wasn't even. Yeah. It wasn't even uh, Kylo that destroyed Luke's temple. It was. Um, it was Palpatine. It was, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's cool, but... It makes no sense. I mean, that's not... In a random-ass comic book years later, it, that ain't it. You know what I mean? Like, that's... It's like, what, so he can just combust a temple, like, halfway across the galaxy, like, without doing anything? Like, I, I don't, Dude, I don't, don't even, understand. Like, if you really start thinking hard about uh, Rise of Skywalker, your brain's gonna tell you, stop doing this, because yeah. it's gonna lead you down a bad path where you're like, wait a minute, Wait, is Palpatine still alive? Why couldn't he just come back to life? He survived the Death Star exploding. Mm -hmm. Wait, is Palpatine living in Rey? You know what I mean? Like yeah, now yeah, like, that's that's the new theory. It's like, wait, she <laughs> strike me down and I will live in you or whatever he says, and then she kills him. And it's like, well, yeah, you didn't use your lightsaber, but I'm still dead. So you know what else? I was watching this totally How random. Does that work? This is this is the most random thing I've said on this on this stream, but. I was watching Mandalorian again last night, and you remember in, remember when Baby Yoda stops the flamethrower guy? Yeah. Why did that flamethrower guy come in and try to fry Baby Yoda? Isn't that the whole reason that they're there? Isn't that the whole reason that Moff Gideon is there? Did he want to barbecue Baby Yoda? Or maybe he didn't like, see it him. It doesn't make sense. Maybe he's too tiny. I don't know, bro. They know they have him surrounded. Like he's gonna send in the flame dude and just <laughs> roast everybody. Like I don't know. I was watching that and being like, this is still a really cool episode, and I still really like this show. But this makes zero goddamn sense. It doesn't... I don't understand. Maybe it all happened too fast, and they couldn't show that with Jump... They would have to, like, show, like, uh, the original Hulk movie where you have, like, a comic book looking, uh, like, different segments. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, hey, everybody ignored it anyway, so... Yeah, whatever. Yeah, there's different There's different plot errors, I guess. Um, Rise of Skywalker should have began with the funeral of Leia, and they should have taken another year or two making it. 100%, dude. I agree. Yeah. I agree. Instead of using scenes of her from a previous movie and trying to, like, make it work. Dude, that shit was horrible, bro. Like, that was... It was so bad. Like, I tried so hard to give it the benefit of the doubt. It is kind of horrifying to look at. I just can't support it anymore, you know? After what Daisy said, I just really can't because it just really cemented... Uh, what I was fighting against in my own mind is that, okay, there was no thought to this. There was no whatever. It's like, no, that can't be. It's Star Wars. Like, Disney so wouldn't do this. what's it going to take? What's it going to take? What would have to happen to break to, of you of that feeling to get you excited again about something? Like, what would it take? Oh, well, I'm excited about Mando. Right. Yeah. So it just depends who is behind the project now. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. So I if, it's some, if it's some new thing or whatever, like, I'm going to be very weary now. It's not going to yeah. be the same. I'm not going to be gung ho like this is going to be amazing. This is going to be awesome. Uh, nah, I'm going to be very skeptical now because you know you did it before. You, you, Dude, you, you, they got. I mean, look, they have to. She has to take her leave, and she can take her leave with all the accolades, all the applause. They can. They can try to make it look as good as possible. And, and honestly, like I'll be super respectful. Whatever. But I think that period, point blank, like she has to go because it's just it's wild that you're who you are and you're in this spot with with this leadership team mm. because there are people that have been in this spot like for years and stuff. And uh, it's just like how how do they not um, constantly firing directors and writers? And it's like, OK, they can't all be that bad. What happened to the Benioff and D.B. Wise guys? What happened? Like, 
Creative differences? Well, dude, what do you like? Apparently, when you, well, they made a well, Netflix well, show. Like, come on, come on. Well, dude. apparently, actually, Kathy wants them to come back. Okay. And they're open to coming back, I guess. Well, of course, the money's great, and it's Star Wars. Who wouldn't want to make Star Wars? But true. I think they dodged a bullet with those guys, though. I don't really like those guys. You a Game of Thrones guy? Dude, I loved Game of Thrones except for the last season. Last season was well. There you go, bro. Dog like, doo doo. I don't. We don't really want these guys. Yeah. It was a blessing that they signed to Netflix. Yeah. And they're gonna work with Ryan Johnson now, which is kind of laughable, right? Like it's. Mm, whoa, wow. Yeah. What if they come together and make a Star Wars movie? <sighs> oh. You know, man. I think Ryan Johnson's a creative guy. Just, just don't touch any. Of my legacy Star Wars characters. Lore. Don't yeah, yeah. Just create your own new stuff. Do whatever you want. I don't care. Put the Star Wars logo on it. Go ahead. I don't care. Just don't touch my legacy characters, please. You don't understand yeah. them. And if you want to touch them, you need to take ten years and just go off to Octu yourself and just surround yourself with Star Wars books from George Lucas and the EU and Legends and and literally everything in between that was ever conceived or printed or created in that time. And uh, cut yourself off from every th- everything and everyone else, and just meditate on it and learn it. You know, I actually think Ryan does understand Luke Skywalker perfectly. I think Ryan is just the kind of person that would much rather have you remember, like his Star Wars movie, and that it was his, than to feel like, oh, that was a pretty good Star Wars movie. You know what I mean? Like, I literally feel like he's that kind of a guy. Um, but I actually don't blame him for being that guy. He broadcasts it pretty openly. I again blame Kathy for hiring that guy to be the middle person in this trilogy. Like it's what just mean, absurd. The, the whole thing where he was like, "Oh, I, I think a good movie is where you, uh, yeah, yeah, one half that, of the I mean, movie theater loves it, the other half of the movie theater hates it." Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, that's video evidence of that. But like, I think just the way he talks, like you can kind of just get that vibe, man. Like, you know, like you can just kind of pick up on those vibes and just assess him as that kind of a person. Like, and if you've ever watched the, and I'm sure you have, but if you've ever watched the, um, the director commentary of the Last Jedi, it is one of the most infuriating things you can watch because it begins with this guy talking about how hard he had to fight to keep the mom joke in. Yeah, that mom joke that we all despise. Yeah, 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 this yeah. dude is literally somewhere on Skywalker Ranch with a microphone in, in some cushy seats with a freaking screen in front of him watching his movie and being like, yeah, I had to really fight for uh, for this mom joke, you know, because everybody realized it was really stupid. And, uh, hey, I won, so it's in the movie, essentially, is what this guy is saying. And so to me, like, it's pretty it's pretty apparent what kind of guy he is. But I can't even really blame him because he was hired to make his kind of movie. Like he, they knew who he was. At least they should have. I didn't know that. Oh, you should watch that. You should watch that commentary, bro. It just, just makes just me mad. I don't. Yeah. You know, and then I'll be yeah. making videos, and then you'll get people being like, "Oh, why are you rehashing the past?" It's like, I just, I'm just gonna move on. Just try to try to try my best to move on. I'll make my little tweets about how I think you know Star Wars is going in the right direction with Dave Filoni and John Favreau and this and that, and how uh, the sequels weren't methodically written. Um, but as for making videos anymore on on the faults i don't know i think i might be done i think i might be done with that it's just i just don't even want to deal with it anymore yeah and i think that's fair and i think people get enough of that on streams and stuff like that and Mm -hmm. you sort of opening up about it and just Mm -hmm. talking about it i think that's uh, maybe even a better way to go about it yeah um yeah these streams yeah yeah. What do you think about uh, Mando, though? If if we could just go back to Mando too, because you did say you're excited for it. Mm-hmm. Um, like, what are you? What are you most excited for? Like, what's kind of got your interest peaked? Oh, this time in the Empire or in the fall yeah. of the Empire. I want to see how Mando, you know, who isn't a Jedi, doesn't know much about the Jedi at all, is going to be reuniting Baby Yoda with his people, and then to to do that, he has to seek out the Jedi who know about his people. So yeah. I think that's going to be very interesting. It's going to be like this this outworld person, this person who doesn't understand this world that we know is going to be coming in there and he's going to try to learn all these new things from uh, uh, from point A. And yeah. where he could end up in that in this beautiful journey, I don't know. Who the people that we're going to meet, I don't know. Um, but I'm excited for it. And the fact that we have you know, Boba and Ahsoka rumored and this and that, 
Mm-hmm. I'm very excited. I'm down. And what do you think about amazing. Moff Gideon? Because I'm like super interested to find because Gene Kylo Esposito has been teasing <clears throat> not just force sensitivity, but like some deep lore connections to the dark side. Like he's he's more or less said there's something he has this I forget the way he phrased it, but he said like there's this deep or ancient connection that he has uh to, to uh like he's never come out and said dark side. He always says like the ones and stuff like that. He speaks crypto the wills. No, he just calls it the he, he's he, I think he's just talking about force sensitives because he says he's one of the ones, you know what I mean? In interviews, uh, basically hinting that he's force uh, sensitive. Maybe he's talking about the wills. That's pretty interesting. It could be wills um, or that, that he's related wild. to them or something. I don't know. Well, there's also this thing of there. There's potentially a tie to the sequel trilogy, and basically, I think that happened will probably happen through Palpatine. Right. And so it's possible that Moff Gideon has some connection to Palpatine and knows about. Because like I'm interested in wills and stuff like that too, but like I'm also interested in, uh, in the High Republic. They teased these like, Abeloth looking beings and these corrupted uh, Jedi. You remember that in like the trailer at the end? There's like that. There's like these flash shots of these like monster looking things. For the High Republic. Uh, yeah, dude. And in some of the. Uh, some of the lead up articles. Remember. Yeah, I'll, I'll send you some of the, the pictures uh, cool. later. But it's like, um, I'm kind of interested in that too. Like maybe some ancient Sith version of the Wills or something like that that's going on. That'd be kind of cool. I'd be down with that. But apparently we're just going to get space Vikings for now. So I don't, I don't know what's yes. going on with that. Well, you know, that again is Lucasfilm just being ambiguous. Well, just predictably dumb, dude. Like, they shouldn't talk. I mean, the Space Vikings are probably cool, and I think they're going to be cool. But that's No like, doubt. It's, but it's the least interesting part of what I think they're doing. Yeah, again, I don't so, care. Like, I don't, I don't, Star Wars isn't about flying, as Dave Filoni said. It's not about spaceships and Space Vikings. It's about the Force. It's about the Jedi. Yeah. What do you think of the Avar Chris, the blonde lady that's... Uh, oh, a Jedi? Gonna, Jedi, or Jedi yeah, Grandmaster she's going to be... She's like Jedi Karen, I think some people are calling I, her. I don't know anything about her. I just saw a picture, and I'm like, okay. I'm pending she, pending my thoughts once you know, yeah, I read the book or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What if she uh, has like a, a fling with Yoda? Would that, uh, would that do it for you? Would that be like... I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> well, of course it's not going to happen. I don't think He's that'll ever that. happen. Uh, no, man, look. Do what you want to do. I don't care what gender they are. I don't care what species they are. Just make them cool. Make them relatable characters. That's all that I yeah. care about. And that, you know, a lot of people uh, like to throw uh, people who didn't enjoy the sequels uh, under the pretense that, okay, they're sexist. It's like, man, what about Ahsoka? We love Ahsoka. So many people yeah. love Padme. So many people love Leia. So many people love Mara Jade. It's like, we don't have a problem with gender. Uh, unless, yeah. you know, maybe some do. I can't speak for them. But sure. the, my fans, for the most part that I know, and myself, and you, it seems like we don't care about gender. We just want characters that are cool and relatable and um, real, you know? Yeah, that was one of the worst gaslightings ever, which was trying to sort of dodge, um, like, criticism under the guise of, like, sexism or, or some kind of ism. Mm-hmm. And the thing that's really messed up about that is... Granted, there uh, are some people who are very sexist. But that's not every, that's maybe like a small percentage. Yeah. I think the thing about it that's weird is that Lucasfilm didn't come out and say that. Like there maybe were some employees that made some comments. Like I think JJ made a comment. I think Kathy's made a few comments of it. But what was really, what I thought was their biggest downfall was as the social media narrative started to dig in, they never tried to correct the narrative. So, like, that's what I think their ultimate failing was, was they allowed the fans to, like, throw a bunch of mud at each other and dig in on their sides and just be angry. And they didn't address it. Like, what an, what an amazing opportunity for uh, Lucasfilm to come out and, and really preach, like, being a true Jedi and just being like, like, you know what I mean? Like, being a little bit more real about this and being like, hey. There were always going to be fans that didn't like this. There were always going to be fans that loved it. We're trying to figure it out. We're we definitely don't think our fans are sexist, and you know what I mean. And just like said, like, hey, we're trying to make this for all of you. 
the Jedi way is to not be so angry yeah, and divisive. L- L- Lucasfilm is now Disney, so it's it. They don't. It. I don't see any uh, personability there. I don't see. They don't seem like humans. They just seem like this corporate entity. It's it's like it's yeah. not even like a person. It's just like this machine. I think that's why we love Dave so much, man. Because like he's because yeah, so he's a clearly, dude. He's a human. Right, you know, it's right, like he's the yeah. face of it. But there is no. Everything else just feels like we are all in. I don't know. We're we're protecting Zion or something, and like the machines are coming in. They're gonna. You know, and and Dave yeah. Filoni is the one. It's like, don't turn him into a, an Agent Smith, man. Like, <laughs> right? You know, yeah, yeah. It's true, true. Are you concerned about that at all? Because there's been some people that have tried man. to. Like, did you catch that thing where um, people dug up comments that he made like in 2016 at a woman's thing or something, and they like dug up comments from like 2016 and they tried to make it seem like. Uh, I think they were kind of trying to make it seem like uh, Dave Filoni like is like an SJW or like doesn't I reacted like... to one of those things and and Did you? yeah no I never tried to spin any certain narrative on him uh I just said that well I don't think you know the problem is that you know Ray's a girl I think the problem is that she's just perfect and you know yeah when I look at Luke I see someone who's flawed when I look at Anakin I see someone who's flawed who can become a good person even though they've taken the dark path and they can always change their ways and it's never too late but with Ray um, she is the same from day one that she is in the end. It's she's just as powerful. No, she's just yeah, she's. I'm with you. I agree. Um, I think though my only comment on that that I think was sort of an understated point was that like if you're like regardless of how you might feel about whatever political issue or whatever whatever thing, if you're literally speaking at a woman's conference every normal human being is going to lean in to like positive femininity you know feminism type verbiage and things like that like that's just called reading the room which is something you criticize disney for not being able to do and i think it's super weird that people would bring up that when like that feels contextually perfectly fine and normal Mm -hmm. and then to try to like pull out all these narratives from it it just shows like what some people are willing to do to like create narratives is that something that people are doing right now i feel like a lot of people did do that yeah i feel like a lot of people were basically just trying to insinuate um that uh the context of him like especially that the context of him being there and speaking that way doesn't matter Mm -hmm. and that just taking his words at face value <clears throat> that this is a person that puts identity politics above storytelling which is just such a leap it's like ridiculous mm-hmm. to be honest with you it's mm-hmm. kind of an absurd leap um so yeah like i don't know like just with that sort of a situation like i totally get what people are saying but i also think context matters like what did you expect him to do like come out and make some bill burr jokes and shit like mm-hmm. that's that that ain't it like that's not what you do in that situation right that's true yeah, I think there are definitely identity politics in the sequels. There's identity politics in Hollywood for sure, bro. Yeah. And I think identity politics, what's really funny is um, Disney specifically has been caught with their foot in the mouth and, and they look like the biggest hypocrites ever. And this is because they never sh- they never did anything for identity politics because they cared about any particular... Uh, political side camp or feelings or any movement or ideology they don't care they only care about money they did the you know woke thing if you want to call it that they did that because they thought it would make them more money Mm -hmm. like that's it and it's obvious because look at what's happening now where like all this stuff comes out but kind of behind the scenes whether it be john stuff daisy stuff the mulan stuff look it is what it is what's the what's the mulan stuff what is well, I don't want to get your I don't want to get your stuff dinged, but um, <clears throat> essentially. Um, okay, let's let's on. not talk about it then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, can tell me. Probably, you can tell me off stream. Tell you off air. Yeah, People know me. what I'm talking about. Though. I don't know. Yeah, I I didn't watch Milan. <clears throat> me neither. Me neither. It had to do with where they filmed it. I've and... never even seen the cartoon. What? Yeah. You'd love the cartoon. Yeah. That is a great movie, dude. Okay. I'll you should check it, check it out. Sure. Yeah. It's yeah. really. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but no, I have zero. I, I really like The Little Mermaid as a kid. <laughs> the Little Mermaid is great. Yeah. I love those Disney movies, dude. Yeah, I grew up on them. Yeah. 
Toy Dude, Story was he, my numero uno. Toy Story's pretty good, man. Mm-hmm. I I liked Aladdin a lot. Yeah, I like. For Aladdin. me, it was Lion King. If if I ever watch Lion King, I will cry like a baby. Sad. Did you yeah. watch the live action? I did. Yeah, by John Favreau. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. pretty good. I liked it. Yeah, I didn't like it as much as the animated. Or the yeah, cartoon, I haven't I mean. seen a single one of the live action remakes. I don't yeah, know why. I'm just not. It's just not, into, not really not into it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I saw like someone that. did a deep fake of the uh, of Lion King. Deep fake of like uh, they turned the CGI into like an animated looking CGI. Oh, it okay. It looked great. Dude, that's it looked legit. Cool. Yeah. Yo, I got a I got this right beside me. I, I tell people sometimes I'm, I'm on my channel about this, but I have uh, Lost Stars, the manga. You ever read the the manga? Ver- you ever read any Star Wars manga? Not the manga, no. I've I've Dude. read parts of the book. Look at these lines, bro. Like. I, there's something about manga artists doing Star Wars. It's great. Oh, they put it so is. much detail into it. Oh my god! And it's just like the expression of the lines and the, like it's just. I tell you, I honestly think these manga artists understand Star Wars better than a lot of the people that made the sequel trilogy. Yeah. They 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 just get how to express it with their art. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I agree. I was a big uh, Dragon Ball Z fan as a kid, as big as mm-hmm. Star Wars, and uh, still am to this day. But. Yes. More you know. Um, Rise of Skywalker should have began. Yes, we. would you ever do a what if Jedi allowed emotions? Sure, yeah, that'd be cool. Uh, could you imagine if they made it part of why Luke nearly killed Ben was because he saw Ben kill Mera? Oh, that'd be interesting. That would be interesting, yeah. It's so weird Disney did exact opposite what they did with the MCU. Feige with a clear path, uh, clear plan along, and Star Wars make it up as they go. Yeah, I always thought that was strange, and I think now that they got Kevin Feige on Star Wars, you know, maybe we'll have a bit of a better plan going forwards, I'd say. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'd venture to say he's involved with the Filoni-verse. I know for sure he's already affected decisions. He helped the Obi-Wan show out a little bit, and... Uh, right. Yeah, yeah, so he's uh, he's definitely moving and shaking over there. And the thing about it is, Feige's just the greatest producer of all time, so, like, it's a little hard to be, like... Hey, why didn't they just do what Marvel did? I mean, there's a reason the MCU is unprecedented. There's a reason there's only one Kevin Feige. And I do agree they should have learned those lessons a lot sooner. But it's a little unfair to be like, why didn't they just do what Marvel did? Dude, you could have said that about movies forever. Why didn't anybody do this before? So Kathleen you know Kennedy mean? was the Kevin Feige of Star Wars, basically? A little, yeah. I mean, sort of. Yeah. 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 I think so, yeah. Some of the weird things. Has- yeah. Sorry, sorry. I was just going to say she has no creative inclination. That's the difference. Like, Feige is a nerd and a sweaty. I think she's changed the way we see movies, absolutely. You know, big time. She's changed everything. But um, with Star Wars, yeah, I don't think she made good decisions at all. Yeah. yeah. Some of the things in the sequels I liked, if used a little different. Example, Luke passing into the Force, Han's death, but wished it was presented differently. Uh, were there any concepts you would keep? If you could redo the sequ- the sequels, you know what Han's death wasn't. It wasn't great, but it wasn't the worst part of it. Um, yeah, Harrison Ford didn't want to be in it anymore, so they're like, "All right." <laughs> yeah, I actually like that scene. I like yeah. that scene a lot. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't change that. What was the question they asked? If there was something, if you would keep you would... anything, yeah, if you keep anything, in this, if you could redo them, <laughs> dude, if I could redo them, I would literally stretch Rise of Skywalker out into a trilogy. I would have literally just stretched that movie out into a trilogy. I love when they go to Exegol and they've got like the, the like cool uh, blues statues. and the greens and yeah, all yeah. of it, dude. I, I loved it. I was like, this is so cool. I love the color palette. I love the design. So literally, movie one, Palpatine's back or there's rumblings. Like episode yeah. seven, Palpatine hard. Like yeah. dude, lay that Palpatine D out. Like just, like just, just get us go ready. into it. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I would have done. Uh, Rise on its own is, it could have been a cool story um, if told in a trilogy form. I like the idea of Palpatine coming back, but I wouldn't bring him back. I yeah, would, like I right would. right up to the brink and. I would, you know what? I, I would have his remnants all over the film, but I wouldn't uh, bring him back in the flesh. And I wouldn't even bring yeah. him back as a ghost or anything like that. Uh, I'd love to see holograms of him. Maybe Kylo, you know, go into like different archives. He could go to Coruscant, the Jedi Temple, look at all the different um, holograms and stuff, and, and and archives of him. 
Um, we could even see him go into the restricted section of the Jedi Temple, which Palpatine would have mm. maybe left untouched. Um, yeah. But I would want a bigger bad. I would somewhat want someone behind all of this, and I would say maybe Plagueis or Plagueis's master. I think the idea of Plagueis being in there would have been amazing. I agree, yeah. I Maybe that's who Snoke was, but... Yeah, and I, I mean, I, I really yeah. do think it was, especially with, you know. You, did you see that interview uh, when the Force Awakens came out and Daisy Ridley was like, "Oh, Snow, do you mean Darth Plague?" And then, yeah, uh, JJ's like, "Uh, uh, 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 uh hold on." Uh, yeah, no, I mean, they probably did. At, I mean, like, let's be real. If they had uh, multiple choice for the Kenobi connection, they probably did have multiple choice for Snoke as well. So maybe one of those threads was gonna be Plague. I'll, I'll tell you a funny story. Uh, so this. Someone who was emailing me for years, um, I'm not going to reveal his name because he doesn't even have a name. He has a company name uh, with a website. And if you go to the website, it's literally one screen with a picture of something in his name. And that is it. There is like no other web page you can go to that it links to. It's like you have just gone come to the domain of blah, blah, blah. And it's like, that's it. It's like full like domain, like da 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 yeah. dot name dot com. And then it's just like a picture of, of like an animated picture of whatever that thing is. And then it's like, I was like, this is so weird. He told me things or she told me things that legit happened in The Last Jedi. And ideas that I believe now that this was someone part of Lucasfilm or something or Disney that was sending the stuff out to have me make a video on and see the fan response. Ah, uh, bro, you're onto it. Okay, so let me tell you something. <clears throat> I 100% believe that either John Boyega or J.J. Abrams were responsible for the Episode Nine plot leaks. I 100% believe that. Because the way that it all happened, the, the silly little story about John losing the script and ha 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 and this, that, second and the third. Yeah, yeah. Some of the other things I've heard about them trying to keep tabs on the fans, bro, they were using Reddit as a, a, a sort of uh, focus group, if you will, to try to see how to make the move. And the thing that you can tell, the reason I think this for sure happened is because I was like getting legit leaks from in sources from, from sources that I have. Yeah. And I knew when they changed the ending from originally there was an ending where Ben was gonna just get yeeted off the cliff and then you'd never see him again, dude. You literally never see him again. And there was so much rage about that and a lot of memes. A lot of memes. And it and then I literally like a week later they they reshot the ending and they changed it. And I was like, whoa. Like, so Ben's not getting yeeted now, or he is, but he's going to climb out of the pit, um, which is actually kind of cool. Like, I like him climbing out of the yeah. pit. But, um, yeah, like, they, I, I legit think J.J. or John uh, leaked the, uh, the script for episode nine. Yeah, why not? See what the consensus is going to be. See what fans yep. say. And that's yep. it. Um, I'm going to tell you who Snoke apparently allegedly according to our theory here that this was all uh okay. sent to us uh who he was but we're gonna do it next week so <laughs> i'm gonna keep oh, you all keep shit, you all okay. keep you all tangled in we've this is the longest uh stream we've done it's a, uh, an hour and 30 minutes 33 minutes um gotcha if i didn't i didn't get through a lot of super chats uh how much would you pay for lucas original 789 scripts um <sighs> i don't have enough money to pay for that so because I'm sure it would cost yeah. a lot. They should not use the expanded material to pick up on slack that they could have explained in the movies. Uh, uh, what if I have is, is Luke in The Last Jedi. What if Luke was being controlled and manipulated by Palpatine to kill Ben with Luke not realizing Palps is alive? Nah, Luke's strong on that. Uh, had great idea today, so Fallen Order to call it Fallen Empire and have members of Sith race be main character. Okay. I'd kind of be into that, dude. I'd be down for I, that. I, yeah, I'd like that. You could be an Inquisitor. That'd be dope, dude. Will Ahsoka label herself as a Jedi or something else? Live action Bendu. Did you see the new poster for Mando season two? It features Ahsoka. Never mind, it's a fan poster. <laughs> 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 they haven't explored Ahsoka's link 
to the daughter yet, which is something that's really interesting for sure. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mm -hmm. Josh and Theory, also Giancarlo Esposito could possibly be related to Tar Vizla. Yes. Hey guys, love your channels. I was raised with the originals because my parents grew up in the 80s and I hate the prequels, but I respect your opinion and I hate the sequels all the same. (laughs) Fair enough, dude. Uh, yeah, fair enough. A Filoni verse is fine because the, he leads the story group, and all the bots, oh, and all the dots will still connect. We could still literally have thirty years of interesting stories between six and seven, and the Agreed. saga remains. I agree with that. Yeah. Hey, man, have you noticed recently for today's technology, they amplify the FX in movies and games. Everything is too clean and smooth and clunky. Um, they do. Yeah, it's not really much about story anymore. It's about dazzling effects. Right, like uh, Transformers. Spectacle, yeah. Yeah, five bucks just because I've never seen Mulan either. <laughs> Thanks. <dude. laughs> hello there. See, I knew not watching that movie would make me successful one day. There you go, bro. Uh, there hello you go. there. Great podcast, you guys rock. Thanks, man. You guys digging it? We're going to return next week, five o'clock. Um, hello there. Great podcast, you guys rock. Mike Haas, <laughs> just because my body, just because my boy Josh knows his stuff. Oh, thanks, man. Well, you should send that to him. Uh, keep it up. I love the videos and live streams. Giancarlo Esposito says we'll be getting answers in season three and season four. Yeah, man. I'm excited for that. I know season three is uh, confirmed as four. E- well, his comments more or less confirm them, apparently. Like, he's he was ta- he's talking pretty flippantly about stuff, which I love. Because he's, think about it, he's so excited, Yeah. he can't stop talking about it. Yeah. And he wants the fans to be as excited as he is because he knows where it's going. That is cool. Yeah, he was talking about how he was, like, breaking lightsabers and stuff as he Dude, was fighting yeah, man. behind the scenes. Break them. Break them. What if Kit Harrington, Jon Snow, is cast as Revan? Nah. We need Keanu. All right, Keanu. with that said, uh, I have homework for you guys. I want you guys to come up with a name for uh, this podcast. Uh, Mark will return for Rule of Two sometime later uh, when he's not so busy right now. He's, he's got a lot of go- stuff going on with his work. So, um, in the meantime, you got us. You always got me. But, uh, yeah, we're happy to have Josh here. Dude, I, I love the show. It was great. I think we got Absolutely, great, great chemistry here and talk yeah. a lot of good stuff. And the convo just kept going. So if you guys agree, let us know and come up with a name. I was thinking, uh, I don't know, TheoryCast, uh, Den of Theory. Uh, <laughs> I love that, but I'm partial, of course. Theory Den. Yeah, yeah I don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll see what happens. So yeah. thanks for chilling with us. Catch you next week, 5 o'clock Pacific Standard Time, next Monday. And... Uh, we got to come up with the outro as well, but see you guys later. See you guys.